Driving on the Kildare to Milltown Road across the Corrup Plain, you might at first glance take this to be yet another part of the legacy of shrines and grottos left behind by the Marian year to dominate the entrance to just about every town and village in the country. But you'd be wrong, for this is Father Moore's well. Father Moore lived with his parents in here beyond the well. The old foundation is still there. When the father and brother died or went away, his mother was very lonely. He was supposed to be appointed a parish priest in County Wicklow. But he said, you won't be lonely. I'll bless the little spring up here near the road and there'll be all these people coming for cures when I'm gone away. The people will be cured here at this well. And from that time on, seemingly, people have coming, coming, coming all the time. It's a good 144 years since the gifted Father Moore performed his seemingly miraculous works for the unfortunate sick. But even today, the cure still holds good. And on most Sundays, you'll find a long line of cars here to prove it. In fact, if local story is to be believed, even the grave has not prevented Father Moore from ministering directly to his flock. There was a boy came out from Kildare here one time and he was born blind. Uh, the third time he came out here and said the traditional prayers and washed his eyes at the well, his sight came back, completely cured. That was way back in 1914. But a strange thing happened at that particular time. A, a clergyman came up from the old ruins back here and passed out by the well up towards the road. And he came over and said to the Hennessy people that was here at the time, your boy will be all right now. You took him to the right place. So, on the way back across the Corra, the father was wondering who the old clergyman was. Well, now, to get back to some years before this thing happened, back in 1886, there was a parish priest in Kildare, Dr. Kavanagh was his name, and he was saying Mass one morning in the parish church when a marble angel an ornamental angel, fell off the altar, hit him on the head, and poor Father Kavanagh died in about 20 minutes. That same morning, Father Staples was about to say Mass in the Carmelite Church, when a clergyman approached him and said, go down at once to the parish church. Dr Kavanagh has met with a serious accident. So he goes down in a hurry down to the parish church and he finds this thing after happening, this marble angel is after falling down, and uh, hitting Dr. Kavanagh on the head, and he was brought into the vestry. Father Staples attended him there till he died. Father Staples' worry was now, who was the clergyman that sent me down? He couldn't make it out. He couldn't remember any such clergyman that he knew, rather pale and all time dress, until Mr. Hennessy told him of the clergyman that came up from the well here. And Father. Staples got a bit excited then and said, that's the very man. That's the very man that sent me down to attend the parish priest in Kildare. This presumably was Father Moore. So he said it was surely Father Moore. It was Lord Walter Fitzgerald who over 50 years ago was able to record that the sticks and crutches stuck on the ground on the well's soft margin by the cured who no longer needed them fully attested to its curative powers. And in more recent times, local man Joel Ryan has seen some equally extraordinary sights. He cured everyone, it didn't matter what ailment or what disease you had. Cured everyone. And it's cured them at the present time. There's that woman there now, there about a, a month ago. I, I was here and she told me that she, in the morning when she get up, she had to be dressed. And at night she had to be stripped. She was in the town of Kildare and she was passing by here. And she come in here and said her prayers. I, I always said I just couldn't tell you, no. But uh, she told me that before she got to her journey's in, she had full power of herself. She, she was sort of paralyzed, no use of her arms. How did he leave this power behind him? Oh, she you know, uh, That'd be the mystery to know that, you know. Well, it's really, I suppose, being a real saint, you see, the, he left the power behind him. Because um, somebody asked him one time to, when the, they were told to be very lonely, we was moved to a parish or if anything happened to him. He said there'd be thousands coming here when he'd be dead and gone. 
and so there is, for my time anyway, for the last 18 years. Any, any fine stone that they are, and you can count 17 and 19 and 20 cars, and they're coming and going constant. Is there a power in the water itself, or is it that...? Oh, the power the ocean, oh, the power's in the water. So the people tell me there's, there's no specialist can give us good a medicine as to drink that water. So it's in the water, it is, and uh, the prayer, is, uh, of course. And do you take the water? Drink it. I drink it, well, I drink some days, twice a day. Isn't that what has me alive? Do you get people coming from very far to get this? As as brought all over Europe, Sc England and Scotland, as as use it as much nearly as in Ireland, when they when they be coming over here, they bring over jars of it and bottles of it. Well, that's all very well today when the man is safely dead and buried, but in his own lifetime, his supernatural powers didn't meet with the same grateful approval. In fact, legend has it that so great had his faith in healing become that the local gentry reported him to the bishop as being a public scandal. Well, of course, it was looked on this year until uh, he proved his pow the power that he, when he lit the candle through his breath. What was that? How did he do that? He put three candles on the table. And uh, well, they were going to tell him to give up the life he was leading or else he was going to be cut off from them. And he asked the bishop, would he give him a privilege? And the privilege, the bishop asked him, what, what was it? He said, will you give me a stole, he says. I have no objection to the bishop. He put three candles on the table and he got the stole from the bishop and he put it around his neck. And he took out the Bible from under his arm and he read for a couple of seconds. And he, he was, he blew his breath and the candles lit. So now see, and he said, again, me now, she go and put them out. And the bishop told him to carry out his good work. They need more power than any of them had. So they, that was the power. They light, light, light three candles with your breath and uh, fight any of them to put them out. And well, that was the power. How about his hat? It's supposed to have a curative power. The, the, the hat is below here in the cottage here in the side of the road. And it's supposed to be for headaches or any ailments about your head. This is Father Moore's hat, and we get a lot of people looking for it, especially on Sundays and Fridays. Well, Father Moore left it himself as for the relief of pe relief for of people that suffer from headaches or their sight or their hearing. How do you use the hat? What do you have to do? You put it on your head, kneel down, you say a few prayers. It, people generally say a prayer for Father Moore's mother and father. Did he leave particular instructions on, on how it was to be used? You know? Well, first, it wasn't to be charged for. There was no charge on it. We wouldn't make it for profit. And it would take care of itself. It wasn't to be put in a box. We needn't bother brushing it or anything like that. It would take care of itself. It would be in much better condition if people had leave it alone. As you see, it's being torn. Souvenir hunters tries to take pieces off it. At one time, we used to let it outside the people. And when they get it out, they tear it. But now we made a strict rule. If they want it, come in for it. If not, they, they won't have it. It's a bit battered now. I mean, uh... Well, it would be, and I suppose we will again. We're at that age, 144. I noticed there's a crutch at the grotto. How did that get there? Before this was renovated, I was out there haymaking, and there was a man there praying. And I was just talking to him. You see, and there's no time I pass by here, see, but I come in to say a prayer. I was even man to see from Tarbury, and he come in on two crutches to see the three times, and he walked out of them the last time he was here, the third time he was here. Uh, that's, wasn't that uh, American, wasn't it?